Okay, welcome back. Now, we've talked about benchmarking and figuring out kind of what our goals are, and we're going to go through the sheet here in the next video that, that really tracks and monitors, monitors those goals, but let's talk about when you should look at that sheet, what you're looking at and when, and, and more importantly, why, right? Why? So once you fill out this sheet, not only from back testing, right, not only from backdating all of your data from your email performance over the last three, six, 12 months, but moving forward, this should act as your review schedule. So this is when you should look at these sheets uh, and what you should look for while you're going through and, and reviewing them. So first of all, you should fill out uh, you should fill out this sheet, and we'll go over all of this when we're walking through the individual sheet, but you're filling this out daily, ideally multiple times a day. What I want you to get a feel for as an email marketer is benchmarked results. So if I send an email out in the morning where and, and I know where it's at at 10 o'clock, then I should know at 10 if it's on pace or on track to be at or above my benchmark for opens and clicks. I should know at noon, I should know at one. If I go in and I'm updating my numbers twice a day, I'll start to see causational. I'll start to see different benchmarks along the way to where if I get X number of opens and X number of clicks by this time of day, it should be at a bare minimum an email that hits our, our, our average. Um, if it's above that, it should track out to here. So really what we wanna know is to be able to predict the performance of an email uh, earlier and earlier and earlier after pressing send. And the way to be able to do that is to, to go in and, and review the results multiple times a day and update this email stat sheet multiple times a day. Either way, we're gonna look at this two big times. Once weekly, so every weekly, or every week, every weekly, every week, we're looking for early indicators and green arrows, right? Opens, clicks, unsubscribes and complaints. Now, why weekly? Why are we looking at this weekly? We're looking for trends, right? Early indicators, early indicators that your subscriber base is really interested in something you're talking about or really put off by something you're, talk you're talking about, that they're really interested in the types of subject lines, they're engaging with the types of subject lines that, that you're, you're using, or they're put off by them. Maybe you can look and say, wow, our unsubscribes have been really high this week. Well, in looking at the stat sheet, looking at the subject lines we've sent, we've sent four uh, urgency or fear-based emails in a row. That's pretty aggressive. It makes sense from a causational standpoint that the more aggressive we are here, uh, the, the bigger negative impact we're gonna have on our list. Or maybe it's, we've sent four uh, curiosity-based subject lines but really haven't been direct with benefit or uh, result on the, the subject line. So people are opening but they're kind of over the curiosity or the blind emails. We need to move back uh, and, and be more benefit driven. We need to be more dead on on what we're talking about. This gives you a chance to see how your emails are performing and adjust before the end of the month. You should also be saying, here's our highest open rate, here's our lowest open rate, here's our highest click-through rate, here's our lowest click-through rate, here's our highest unsubscribe, here's our lowest unsubscribe. Every time you look at this sheet, whether it's monthly, uh, uh, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually, you should be benchmarking your best and worst in every category. Why? Because we want to try to duplicate the, the good results and we want to try to avoid the negative results. So we need to understand what's causing them. If you're not looking at these, if you're not diving into the data, there's no way you're gonna understand that. No way whatsoever. So weekly, looking for those early indicators on interest or disinterest on opens, clicks, unsubscribes, complaints. This should inform your next week. Right? Your marketing calendars it, it should be uh, planned out well in advance. We've talked about 30, 60, 90 day marketing calendars, but if what you're doing right now isn't performing even either from a topic or from a positioning standpoint, you need to adjust, right? There's a reason that marketing calendars and the one that we use and the one that I suggest that you use are dry erase because you can adjust. You adjust based on data, based on performance, based on result. If you're not looking at, at, at that data, if you're not looking at that performance, then you can't adjust. So weekly, we're gonna break down and look at this stuff. Now, every month, deep dive, right? Deep dive, every single month. We're looking for emerging trends, good or bad. So 
What are topics that all month long, what, what was your most popular topic, your most highly engaged topic? What was uh, the best send time, right? And as we move into uh, new email technology and we're starting to build data per subscriber, uh, we're, getting, we're, we're getting the ability to send at the most optimal time based on that, that subscriber's uh, engagement history with you and your brand and your email. But really, in a general broadcast, what's the most optimal time? You should be testing these things. You should see if we're trying to do everything we can to get the highest number of opens, the highest number of clicks, and really maximize, uh, maximize our, our email ROI and the traffic that we're driving from email, you have to be looking at the data. So we know what we're looking at weekly, but monthly we're taking a much deeper look while we're still saying what was our best and worst email in, in opens, clicks, unsubscribes, complaints and forwards, we're getting a little bit more granular and saying, you know what, this topic is great or we've talked about this a lot and people don't wanna hear about it anymore. You can see the decline in engagement in this topic. We need to make sure that next month we're not talking about this. Right? We need to take some time off or we need to focus on another angle on this because our list is not engaging with it. Right? They're not at all engaging with it. You need to be able to say, wow, for whatever reason, when we're sending emails at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern, how arbitrary, we're getting a bump in email open rates. Let's go ahead and test, uh, let's test that time. Let's, let's see if that is an anomaly or if that actually is uh, a change that we should make in our email marketing. And type. So we've talked about subject line type a little bit, but this is where you're really going to focus and look back and see, not campaign to campaign, but for the entire month. You can actually sit down and in one sheet read every subject line in sequential order that you sent to your list. How do you feel when you get done reading it? Do you feel like you've had a cohesive conversation or do you feel like uh, you have induced bright shiny object syndrome, right? Shiny object syndrome. Uh, and, and when you're looking at it and you're seeing, wow, we used a lot, of, uh, a lot of scarcity this month. Let's make sure that we're not using fear-based scarcity or urgency as much next month. We went way too heavy on, on the blind uh, email copy or the curiosity email subject lines and it started to see diminishing results. Let's make sure we swing away from that next month. Everything about these two pivotal tracking times are to make sure that you are reacting to what your email subscribers are not so subtly telling you. In the past, you may have just been ignoring it. This one simple sheet is gonna walk you through how to track it and even show you uh, in multiple different ways. So these are the times that well, these are this, these are the KPIs that you should be checking and when you should check them. And in the next video, we're going to dive into a demo of the email tracking sheet, and I'm going to show you what makes it such a powerful tracking tool and helps you uh, decide what you should be focusing your improvement efforts on. So I'll see you in the next video.